Welcome. And uh, of course, we start a new parsha now this week, Parsha Pinchas. We will start with a bracha. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Kitchanu Bemitzvotav Etzivano Lasok Bedibre Amen. Right, that's good so far. And here we are. Uh, we made quite a bit of progress. Uh, we are at this point talking about, we just went last year at this time, we went through the census that was taken uh, right before, this is a census that's taken right before they enter the land of uh, Canaan and uh, the, the changes in the in numbers of the tribes, uh, even though still they come to about 600,000 plus, uh, still about that number. So, so we, what, yeah, go ahead. What chapter, what chapter and verse or, or what? Okay. Uh, chapter um, that's 26, chapter 30, 20, what? 26, 26 and verse, verse 55. It's a long okay. chapter. 26. So I'm going to, okay. So it's probably in Shri Shi. 55, you said? I did. Okay. Yeah, it's in Shli Shi. Oh. All right, got it. So, Ach Begoral, however, so it talks in one way about how to, that they have to divide the land according to the number of families, uh, the, num the names of the families, or the number of the names of the families, right? Ach Begoral, however, by lot, Yechalef et Haaretz. But the land should also be divided by lots, however, right? Lishmot matot avotan in halu, according to the names of the tribes of their fathers, they shall inherit. So now we get to a, um, let's see if that is the, yeah, that's the verse, Nun Hei 55. And this is the Rashi on Nun Hei. And um, trying to puzzle this out, and I will tell you, it's, it is a matter of puzzling it out, and uh, I hope I have it worked out. If I don't, you'll, you'll challenge me or come with an alternative meaning, but you'll see what we're talking about in a moment. So, le shemut matot avotam, according to the names of their father's <coughs> tribes, excuse me, <coughs> So when we're talking about the names of their father's tribes, we are referring to the ones who, who had left Egypt, who departed Egypt. So the people who, who were alive at that time. So the scripture changed, okay, made a, made a difference of this particular inheritance. From any situation of inheritance in the Torah. Because in, in the case of all the other uh, situations of inheritance, the living inherit the dead. Excuse me, one second. Just had to clear my throat. The Khan, but however, here may Tim Yorshim et Hachayim. The 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 dead, the deceased, inherit the living. So already now you understand that there is a puzzle, right? How is that happening? And we're going to Rashi is going to explain this to us. And this is of course based on the wording of this particular verse, these verses. Kate Sat. How so? Achim, so he gives an example. Achim if there were two brothers who departed from Egypt, banim, each of them had children. In the, the, the ones who made it to the land of Israel, the land of, right? The land of Canaan. So two, one of them had one son, 
and the other one had three sons. So, so they were counted as two who came out of Egypt, right? Ha'echad natal chelik echad, okay? So in this particular case, the one brother would, who had one child would take one portion, rash losha, and the other brother who would take, who had three sons, would take shlosha, would take three portions in this particular division. Shinne'emar, why? Because it states, la'ela, to these techalek ha'aretz, shall the land be divided. So at this point, right, we have one son who is older than 20 years, and we have three sons of the other, of the other person who, has, who are older than 20 years. And each one of them, as Rashi's going to tell you, gets, a, gets this, a, an equal portion. Chazra nachalatan. So now we take this, and we take it back, etzel avi avehin, to their grandfather of these sons, and they each one of them divides equally. So each one of these four sons gets an equal portion. And this is what is meant when it states, according to the names of their father's tribes, they shall inherit. Because now, after these children have divided up the portion, they now therefore, they now, it went back according to the children who left the land of Egypt, right? And those were two. And so we're saying that each one of those uh, were divided according to the ones who left Egypt, right? Were that the case, then if they had simply divided up the land back according to the people who had left Egypt, remember, there would have been two equal portions for each one of those two sons, right? Achshav, but in this particular case, because the one had one son and the other had three sons, not lu arba chalakim. They take four portions. So in that sense, you understand that the children who are going to enter the land of Israel are actually giving, in a way, four portions back to the two sons. So those two sons who came out of Egypt are, in a sense, getting the inheritance of these living. In other words, they no longer are living because they were 20 years old and up when they left Egypt, right? And that was that census at the time. And they all perished. But now they are going to have four portions. Does this make sense? If you have a question, please, that took me quite a while to figure out how this was working. Any comments or questions? Okay, I hope, I hope that is not a stunned silence. All right, going on. Ach Bergoral, however, by, by lot, Yatsu Yehoshua v'chalev, and, with, and it's because there's this ach, however, right? It's understood to diminish the application of this particular way of um, dividing it. So he says, Yehoshua v'chalev, Joshua and Caleb were exceptions. V'keshehu omer, and as it says in the book of Judges, chapter one, they gave to Caleb, Hebron, Hebron, as Moses had spoken. For Omer, and another place it says in Joshua chapter 19, Al Pi Hashem, at the mouth of Hashem, not nu lo et ha'ir asher, asher, it looks like. Um, I'm going to think this is Sha'al, okay? This is the, they gave him the city 
which he had asked. So that apparent, I, my understanding of this is that this was not by means of lot. This was simply straightforward as, as had been discussed elsewhere. Matot Avotam, the tribes of their fathers. Yatsu Gerim Vadim. So people who had who were, who, who were proselytes, converts, and servants, slaves, did not get an inheritance. They did not receive an inheritance in the land of Israel, at least in this particular allotment. However, you understand that quite possibly, a, while, the, um, while the convert, him or herself, might not have gotten a, a portion in this inheritance if their children married an Israelite, and of course they now had become Israelites, uh, then they would obviously share in that particular allotment. I'm ready to go on. Al Pihagoral, so it goes on to say, Al Pihagoral, according to the lot, Techalek Nachalato, his inheritance shall be divided. Bain Rav Lema'at, whether a large amount or a small amount. And here's the Rashi and Al Pi Hagoral, according to the lot. Hagoral Haya Middaber. The, the lot, literally, this means that the lot would speak Kamosha Pirashti, as I've explained. So in a peer in a previous, in this particular section, in, in a previous session, we had discussed this language of al pi hagoral. Magid, so he just says, Magid shenitlach nitchalcha beruach hakodesh. So we're saying that the land was divided with the divine spirit, right? With the Holy Spirit, uh, that there was a spirit of prophecy involved here. Um, and as we're reading this right now, you know, I'm asking myself, what is the significance of them saying this? And I'm wondering to myself if this has something to do with the, the fact that it seems to this very day, this area is disputed and that it's trying to say that since this was distributed by the divine spirit, giving it a certain level of authority uh, to counteract the disputes that seem to have dogged us from the very beginning as to how this, how this particular real estate needs to be divided. I believe that's the end of the Rashi. Oh, there we go, a little bit more. L'chach ne'emar, and for this reason it states, al pi Hashem, right? And the, uh, at, the, at the divine you know, command, at the mouth, by the mouth of Hashem. Uh, going on. <clears> the <throat> Ele Pekude Halevi. So now we go on to the uh, counting of the Levites, the Mishpachotam, according to their families, the Gershon. We know that they're basically three Levitical families, and they're going to be enumerated here. The Gershon to the family of Gershon, Mishpachat Ha Gershoni, right? The Gershonite families. Le Kahat, there we go, according to Kahat, Mishpachat HaKahati, the Kohatite family, the Merari, Mishpachat HaMerari. And according to the, uh, Ka, the Merari family, the family of Merari. Ele, I believe there's no Rashim, let me see. Okay, look, sorry, let's go back. Yeah, right, it's the, it's the next verse. That we're going to look at. Ela Mishpachot Levi, okay, so according to the families of Levi, Mishpachat Halivni, so remember these are the descendants, these are grandchildren, right, the families. Um, Levi, Mishpachat Halivni, so that we have the Livnites, Mishpachat HaChevroni, the Chevronites, Mishpachat HaMachli, Mishpachat Hamushi, the family of 
Machli, the family of Mushbi, Mishpachat Karthi, Ukahat Holid et Amran. And we know that Kahat was the uh, father he sired Amram. Okay. So we have Kahat is right up here, mentioned here. So here we go with these all these different Levitical families that were grandchildren essentially of Levi. So Ele Mishpachot Levi, he says, you know, in terms of the further descendants of the of Levi, sorry about that. Chaser Khan, so he says, notes that missing here, Mishpachat Hashim I Vahauzieli. So we are missing in this particular list of the grandchildren, the families of Shimi and Uziel, Ukitsat Min Hayitzari. It says, and part of the Yitzhari family we are missing. Going on. Veshem Eshet Amram. So now that we know we've got Kahat who sired Amram. Shem Eshet Amram, the wife of Amram, Yochevet Bat Levi. She was Yochevet, the daughter of Levi. So Amram married his aunt. Okay, that's what we have to understand. Asher Yalda Otala Levi, who uh, was born to Levi, Bemitzrayim, in Egypt. But Teled La Amram, so in other words, that is to say, Yochevet bore her to Levi in Egypt. But Teled La Amram, and Amram, okay, remember Amram married Yochevet and were born to Amram, Aharon, Aaron, Ve'ed Moshe, Moses, Ve'ed Miriam, Achotam, and Miriam, their sister. <clears throat> so the point here is that Rashi's picking up on the fact that it says, Asher Yalda Ota Levi Mitzrayim, which he bore to Levi in Egypt. And uh, in other words, uh, right, okay, that Levi's wife bore, bore Yochevet in Egypt. Ishto, that is to say, his wife, Levi's wife, Yaladata Bemitzrayim, she gave birth to her in Egypt, or the other versions that say Lidata Bemitzrayim, her birth took place in Egypt. The Ein Horata Bemitzrayim, however, her conception didn't take place in Egypt. Hachoma, excuse me, Latoch Hachoma, Yaldata. So the point is that when they entered the, the wall, that's what it's saying here, of Egypt, that's when she, get, she was born, or she gave birth here, that is, Levi's wife gave birth to Yochevet. As they entered Egypt is the point that they're making here. Behi Hashlima Minyan Shivim. And that's how you get the number 70 souls who came to Egypt who were Jacob's children. Sha'arei bifratan, because if you count the names of the people who came down to Egypt, Jacob's descendants, i atam wotze ela shishim u teisha, it's gonna, what it's gonna say, all the way down here, the teisha, you're only gonna find 69. So Yochevet was uh, conceived as you know, nine months before they actually came to Egypt. And when they arrived in Egypt, she was, she was born. And so that's how she counts as the 70th soul. Onwards. So we now have, we have Amram married to Yochevet. And uh, we now have their children, Aaron, Moses, and Miriam. So now we have Aaron's children. Born to Aaron were Nadav, Avihu, et Elazar, ve'itamar. So he had four sons, right? Nadav, Avihu, Elazar, ve'itamar. Vayamot Nadav, Avihu, and we're summarizing a little bit of history up to that point. Nadav and Avihu died. 
when they offered up strange fire, right, before God. And the number of these Levites were 23,000. We're talking about all males from one month and, and up because they were not accounted for amongst the rest of the children of Israel. And the simple reason is because they, it, uh, there was no inheritance given to them amongst the children of Israel. So here we go. For they were not counted amongst the children of Israel. Liot nimnim bnei esrim shana. In other words, they weren't counted at, at, at twenty years old. Umat and what was the reason? Kilo natan lahem nachala, because they were not receiving a inheritance of the land. Vahanimnim biben esrim shana. And those who were counted from 20 years old, Hayu Bnei Nachala, they were old enough to receive an, 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 a portion of the land of Israel. Shine'emar, as it says, Ish Lefi Pekutav Yutan Nachalato, because it says, each man according to his being, his numbers shall be given the inheritance. And since they were numbered from 20 years old, that's the ones that received an inheritance. Take one more verse. Ayla, uh, let's see, make sure I've got the right place here. Yes. Okay. Ayla Pekudei Moshe Ve'elazar HaKohen. These are the accounts of Moses and Elazar, the priest. Remember, Aaron has already passed on, and same with Miriam. Ashir Pakdu et Bnei Yisrael, which they counted, they took numbered, they numbered in uh, the children of Israel, the Arvot Moav, in the plains of Moab, Al Yerdein Yerecho, near Jordan, near the Jordan and Jericho. I believe that we don't have any more Rashi's till the next verse. So we'll take one more. Uva Ela lo haya ish mi pekudei Moshe ba'aharon hakohen. And amongst these, there was not a single person from those counted by Moses and Aaron the priest. Asher paktu et bnei Yisrael b'midbar Sinai, which when they counted, took account of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Sinai. Yeah. So let me mark the place here. We'll see if we have enough time for the Rashi. But I just want to mark it. And we'll see what we've got here. Yes. Etc. And amongst these, there was not a man. Aval Hanashim, look at this. But regarding the women, Lo Nigzarag Zerat Amaraglim. But with regards to the women, this edict regarding as a result of the of the spies was not set on the women. So many of the women survived. The Fishahin Hayu Mechavavot et Haaretz, look at this, because they um, they loved the land. They held it very dear. Hanashim Umrim, the men said, Nitna Rosh Venashuva Mitzraima. It's, in other words, let's about face and return to Egypt. That's back in Numbers 14. Vanashim Umrat, but the women said, Tna Lanu Achuza. Remember, when it came to the women, we had the daughters of Tzlavchad who came to Moses and said, listen, our dad didn't have any sons. Uh, does that mean he doesn't get an, an inheritance? They were the descendants of him. He had passed on. And, uh, they, they, uh, and they said, give us an inheritance. And that's understood from a literary point of view to represent the women 
who still wanted a portion in the land. Lachach nismecha, and for this reason, it's connected. Um, Parshat benot Tzlavchad lachan, and that's why we're going to read about the section of the daughters of Tzlavchad here. Uh, Rabbi, the, the next verse is the last verse in the chapter, and there's no oh, Rashi. Rashi. Yes, very yeah. good. Let's do that. Maybe. Okay, we can. Let's do that. All right. Ki amar Hashem lahem, for the God Hashem had said regarding them, mot yamutu b'midbar, they will certainly uh, perish in the wilderness, ish, and not a man of them remained. And of course, the way Rashi's understanding this, we're emphasizing the ish, right? A man, ki'im kalev ben yifune, the Yoshua ben Nun, except for Kalev, son of Yefune, and Joshua, son of Nun. They're the only two males who were 20 years old and up at the time of that original census who made it at this to this point and with this we'll conclude the lesson so we're not counting moses in that because moses, he moses must, didn't yeah, he, uh, yes Mary, yes was not counted was he counted both times or one time but not this time um, no. well just that he didn't come in right so we're talking right right yeah Good, good point. All right, I'm going to stop the recording right here.